Hello everyone, my name is Shadowswalm. I'm here to present you guys the patch 3.11 notes for League of Legends. This will not contain everything that you see in this box. We are going to be going over the champions, the game interface, league system changes, as well as general changes. I will be giving you my input on what I think is very vital, as well as just what Riot thinks in general. Let's get right into things. If you want to know more or read the patch notes for yourself, Go ahead and click the link in the description down below. It will bring you to this page that you see, and you can go ahead and check out everything for yourself. Let's get right into it, guys. So for champions, Draven. The summary that Riot's giving. Draven's passive will now consume all stacks on kill and grant bonus gold, although the gold granted per stack has been reduced by one. Additionally, Draven's passive will now grant at least 50 gold bonus per kill. The context that Riot gives. Considering Draven is obviously the greatest champion in League of Legends, his new League of Draven passive feels a little flat now. We're looking for ways to make his adoration mechanic more rewarding both functionally and visually during late game and multi kills. League of Draven, which is his passive. Grant now grants a base 50 gold bonus upon killing an enemy champion, up from zero. Now consumes all stacks of Adornation on kill to reward Draven with gold, previously only consuming half. Gold per Adornation stack reduced to 2 from 3 per stack. Visual and sounds for League of Draven play on every Draven kill. Instead of only playing on kills which consumed a large number of stacks. What this means to us, the players, is say you get that level 1 kill, you go ahead and invade, you are guaranteed at least the 50 bonus gold. Bar none, regardless of if you have stacks or not, you are guaranteed that 50 bonus gold, which can add up quickly. And with the change to Adornation now consuming all stacks of it, you know, all of your Adornation stacks being consumed instead of just half, you theoretically will get more gold, thus being able to buy your items that much quicker. Instead of, you know, consuming half and only getting, you know, let's say you had 100 stacks and, you know, instead of it only taking 50 and giving you 150 gold, you now get... You know, again, assuming you have 100 stacks, you now get 200 gold because it consumed all of your stacks. So theoretically, you will get more gold the higher your stacks are. The less stacks you have, obviously, the less gold, but in theory, it will only go up with the stacks you have. Which means quicker Infinity Edges, quicker Bloodthirsters, Phantom Dancers, Guardian Angels... Whatever items you want, you will get them quicker if you play Draven correctly. Fiora. Context. Fiora's Blade Waltz was hindered by reliability issues for a while. So we're making some quality of life changes to help ensure her, that her ultimate is suitably, yeah, suitably satisfying to use. Blade Waltz. We now choose untargetable and invulnerable tar or invisible targets if necessary, to continue Blade Waltz. If Fiora needs to jump to such a target to continue Blade Waltz, she will do so, although the ability will do no damage to untargetable slash invisible units. If the target is revealed when Fiora jumps to them, aka in the brush, she will do damage as normal. So, let's say for instance Fiora casts her ultimate and you know, the only one that she's able to bounce to at that point in time would be a Morgana who just popped a Zanya's. She will now continuously bounce to Morgana, but will do no damage to Morgana until her Zanya's is done. Same thing goes with, say, a Twitch that goes invisible, Evelyn that's hiding in the brush, you know, somebody that's hiding in the brush. She will still go ahead and bounce them if ultimately necessary to continue her ult if she is close enough. And if she does reveal them by going into that brush, she will do damage to them and most likely stick to them if they are the closest one to her at that point. So 
Overall, it sounds better. We will have to see this in gameplay. I can imagine players already flipping out because Fiora's ultimate's no longer wasted if people go invisible, pop Zanyas, you know, stuff like that. So we'll have to see. Plus, this will help players that are going up against, say, Akali. If Akali's the only one there, Fiora will still jump to them even if Akali's in her shroud and help her teammates reveal her. Regardless if they have an oracles, a ward, or not, this will actually help them reveal her. Very, very, very vital that I think Riot is banking that on for players to go ahead and, you know, get that clutch Fiora ult off to catch where, you know, Nikali is in her shroud or where Twitch is, etc. So they can get that kill on those vital players. Galio. Summary. We're reducing Idol of Duran's cooldown at all ranks and fixing the mana cost to a flat number lower at o while it's lower overall at all ranks. The context that Riot's giving. Galio's ultimate has several measures in place to keep in check. But between the counters and the resources cost, aka mana and cooldown, we, felt, or we feel it's currently too constrained overall. By reducing his ultimate's cooldown and mana cost, we should ensure that Galio stays viable or stays a viable pick at all levels of play. The Idol of Durand, which is his ultimate, cooldown has been reduced to 150, 135, 200 at their respective levels from 170, 150, 130 again at their respective levels. And mana cost reduced to 100 at all ranks from 100, 150, 200 at respective levels. Overall, what this means is for us is expect to see those Galio ults that much more often and players not be scared to go ahead and pop the ult, you know, if they really need that clutch ult to go off to save, you know, one or two teammates. Very, very vital indeed. And it it's a play, you know, it's a it's a change players have been asking for for quite some time. So I'm glad Riot's been listening and you know, they're implementing this now. Mordekaiser. Iron Man now displays a shield in amount or now displays shield amounts in segments similar to health segments. So his passive now shows I believe it's his passive at least, shows the shield kinda like how Malphite's shield is. It's shown in segments just like the health segments that Malphite has. So nice visual change there allows players to see exactly how much shield Mord has versus trying to guess on the you know little bar underneath his health. Very, very nice indeed. Singed. Fling. Fixed a bug where Fling was dealing more damage than the tooltip values indicated. Meaning, I'm throwing numbers off the top of my head here. If Singed's Fling said deals 200 plus 150 damage, Theoretically, you would think, okay, it does 150 before Magic Resist comes into play. You know, it was dealing, like, let's say, 350. Or no, let's say it was dealing 400 when it said 350 before, you know, Magic Resist comes into effect. Now that's no longer the case. It's doing exactly what it says on the tooltip, and players can no longer get gibbed by, sin, you know, flinging them for, you know, a number that's not correctly represented on the tooltip. Glad they implemented that, and you know, I'll have to see what happens when Cinch players go ahead and try to do that. They were, you know, banking on those lucky, you know, bug stabbing for them with the flame. Thresh. Death Sentence. If the target cleanses the initial spell or blocks it with the spell shield, the chain will now shatter, preventing Thresh from casting Death Leap. Meaning, if you have, say, a Banshee's Vial or Veil, if you are Sivir and you pop your Spell Shield, if you pop, again, Cleanse, because you happen to have that, you know, if you go ahead and pop that when Thresh hooks you, he can no longer Death Leap to you and thus knock you back with Flay and catch you in his ultimate. He has to wait until Death Sentence is off of cooldown to try again. Very, very nice change right there to Thresh. I know a lot of people, including myself, who played Thresh, you know, that was very, very annoying to deal with when you spell shield as, say, Sivir or your, 
you know, Banshees goes and catches that. Thrush still leaps to you, knocks you towards his teammates, and gets you killed because you slowed and got knocked to his teammates. That can no longer happen. Glad they changed that. Udir. Phoenix Stance. Phoenix Stance buff now displays a timer for Udir's next Phoenix Breath attack. I'm assuming this is going to help jungle players with Udir a lot, so that way they can go ahead and time out when that breath is going to happen to go ahead and clear their camp and move on to the next one as quickly as possible, so that they, get, they can get their gold as quickly as possible, get the experience as quickly as possible, get to the lanes as quickly as possible for their ganks, and help their teammates out again as quickly as possible. These changes are all nice. Can't wait to see them in play, and you know, I can't wait to see how players deal with the Udir and Thresh changes in general. You know, the Udir change isn't, you wouldn't think it's that big, but realistically speaking, when you can actually time out when that breath is going to happen, that adds a whole new depth to Udir that players don't actually realize. We'll have to see how, you know, really good pro players and just top ranked players in general deal with that. Zack. Summary. Zack's chunks drop are now, or Zack's chunk drops are now more contestable by opponents. The context ride is giving. When we first designed Zack, our initial concern was that his chunks would be difficult for Zack players to use if we didn't stack uh, the variables in his favor. So we coded the chunks that Zack would absorb them even when his enemies were closer and should be given the build, or should be able to crush the chunks. Then we launched Zack, who then turned, who in turn launched himself straight into the quote unquote awesome category over multiple levels of league play. We're still balancing Zack out, but these changes should help give Zack's opponents a fair and equal chance to stomp out the chunks in lane and stop the green goo champ from sustaining so effectively. Cell Division. Pretty much the big key point here, adjusted passive chunk drops to be more contestable by enemies. If an enemy player is within a thousand units of Zack, his chunks will spawn in a contestable zone between him and his opponent. This isn't changed but listed for clarification. The or increased uh, the range at which champions cause chunks to be more contestable, aka fly away from Zack, to a thousand from seven hundred. Slightly increase the duration or distance contestable chunk or yeah contestable chunks travel from Zack. Chunks are now created or credited to whoever is closest to them in the event that Zack and an enemy uh, champion are present, rather than automatically going to Zack. Reduce the chunk and vulnerability time to 0.25 seconds from 0.75. Zack or uh, yeah, chunk and vulnerability now applies to both Zack and enemy champions. Previously only applied to enemy champions, Zack now has to wait the point 25 seconds as well before he can absorb his chunks. And Zack now has increased pick, uh, chunk pickup range and bypasses the invulnerability delay timer during Let's Bounce. So right there in that little section I just read, literally, if you're going up against, say, Zack Top, or you're in a team fight and the last one alive is Zack, he no longer has the almost best survivability in that fight. You know, there are a few champions in the game that have a very high survivability and sustain. Vladimir's one of them, Zack's been one of them since they released him, and there are a few others as well. But Zack more so than others, just because, you know, even if you were closer to his chunks than he was, he was still absorbing them, gaining, or gaining that health back. And, you know, you had to wait longer to stomp them out than he had to absorb them. Now it's equal for both players, you know, for both sides, for the Zack player as well as the, you know, opponent to go ahead and stomp them out or collect them and just deal with him in general. This will hopefully overall reduce his survivability in lane if he's, you know, that top lane, but still make him effective against, you know, enemy teams in a team fight, still be disruptive and be a nuisance to deal with if left unchecked. You know, the right here, this last one, Zack now has increased uh, chunk pickup range and bypassed the invulnerability delay timer during Let's Bounce. That's very vital, because while he is bouncing, he can't do anything else but bounce, 
So at least this gives him a chance to go ahead, you know, get damage out as well as try and sustain. You know, if you take away that sustain from Zag during his ult, he's probably just going to flop over dead in about two seconds. So now he has at least that fighting chance still while he's ulting. An elastic slingshot. Fix the bug where the landing point visual was or landing point visual effect was not appearing for enemies. Okay, that'll help against players that are going up get against Zack or about to get ganked by Zack or they see him in lane and they see him getting ready to go ahead and slingshot. This will allow them to circumnavigate his slingshot and be in a better position overall. I can't wait for these changes to happen and for players who are just that diehard Zack player to continue to play Zack and players that were playing him just because he was flavor of the month to stop playing him. We'll see less Zack players, but we'll see less Zack players in general, but more better players of Zack, if that makes any sense whatsoever. The items, it, not really a huge deal, just a visual bug. Not going to concern ourselves about the Quisted, uh, Crystal Scar Twisted Tree line. Again, I'll put a link in the description down below for those of you that want to check that out. But game interface. Big, big change right here. Undo button in the item shop. The context. I accidentally bought a BF Sword of Swain? We've added an undo button to the item shop, giving Rune Terra's most misclickiest of players the chance to undo their recent purchases. Purchases cannot be reversed if those items have had an irreversible impact on the game, such as dealing damage, mitigating damage, healing, providing a bonus that is usable by teammates, etc. Key point right here. Players can now undo recent transactions in the game within the... Er, yeah, players can now undo recent transactions within the game... Uh, within the game item shop. Undo history is cleared under the... Under certain events such as leaving the shop area, dealing damage, receiving damage, or casting a spell. Items will be removed or items will remove benefits they granted you or yeah items will remove benefits they granted you when undone such as gold gained from gold over time items certain items cannot be undone such as the home guard or captain's boot enchantments tier boot what this means is say say you accidentally bought i don't know a pickaxe and your Kha'zix for or not Kha'zix say you know, you bought a pickaxe as Katarina, you didn't mean to. You, As long as you don't leave your base, you can return that item. Say you bought an extra pair of boots, you still haven't left your base, oh look, you can go and return that, get your full refund, put it to something else. As long as you don't do damage, aka go into the jungle, do damage with that, try and, you know, go to lane, whatever, you can still return that item for that full, you know, refund. It's your mulligan, in a way. If that makes sense. For those players that, you know, like me, that you've bought, like, the wrong item several times without noticing it, or you bought more mana potions than you intended, or whatever, you know, you bought the wrong set of wards, for instance. Say you're a support, you, you're supposed to buy the pink wards, you accidentally bought vision wards. You can go ahead, do the return, get your vision, you know, get your pink wards instead of your blue wards, I believe it is. So yeah, that, that works out. It's very nice and that had to be implemented. I'm glad that's actually, you know, on a quote unquote timer, just like it is in Dota 2, but you know, you just can't deal, you can't have it affect you in any sort of way. Say you're actually support, you don't, you know, you just stay in the base, you go ahead and get the gold from, you know, say you cage is a lucky pick for a few seconds and you notice you don't need that. If you sell it back, the gold that you gain from the Cage's Lucky Pick will actually go away as well. So, you gotta be careful with that. HUD. Mousing over champion's passive icon will now show a range indicator if the passive has a range of influence. Example, Soraka's Consecration. So that's nice, at least you'll be able to see where the passive's ranges are. Such as, you know, again, Soraka's Consecration or... Uh, fiddles terrify spectator mode this is big right here team fight UI context for this 
We've developed a new teamfight UI in, for spectator mode that minimizes and concentrates the UI so it's easier to focus on the action during team fights. With this change, we've optimized the display of battle information in team fights, including who's involved in the fight, who's winning, and how many people have died on either team. So, in general, for those of us that are like myself, you cast League, or you just spectate League as a hobby to see how other players play, this is very beneficial. It tells you everything you pretty much need to know without looking down you know, the bottom middle of your screen. So while spectating, you can press A to toggle the team fight UI. Minimalist UI mode that focuses on presenting information relevant to on-screen conflicts. Team health bars communicate the momentum of fights and impact of AoE. Crowd control indicators visualize the power of crowd control abilities. Pentakill tracker tracks the progression or tracks progress towards double pent or double triple quadrant pentakills. So again, for those of us that cast or watch league games, you know, we're spectating off of someone, whatever. This UI right here, the team fight UI, comes in very, very handy when that big, big, big team fight happens in the middle, you know, 25 minutes in, you know, 20, 25 minutes in, it's a 5v5. You have to see what's going on. This UI helps you. It tells you everything you need to know in a nice, you know, area. I'll probably do a video about how it looks, you know, in the next day or so. Assuming this patch is out, I actually haven't loaded up my league yet. I just went to the website. But yeah, that's very, very nice. And this will show you who gets, you know, the kills, stuff like that as well. And if, you know, they have a crowd control, shows you how, how all the crowd control is being utilized. Also, I'm just, I'm just going to toss this in with, you know, the nice spec or team fight UI. Automatic dragon and baron timers. Thank you. I no longer have to almost guess when baron and dragon will be up. This is very, very vital for, again, casters, spectators in general, to tell us when those are going to be up and when they're most likely to be contested. Generally, it's, you know, right when they spawn. You know, first time around, it's going to be, uh, I would say, about 10, 15 minutes in. After that, it's almost going to be every time they're up, for a dragon at least. For a baron, it's that maybe once or twice a game. Maybe once or twice. So, very, very glad about this. League system. Voting screen reward borders. Voting screen borders will now show a border for your highest rank achieved in previous season in any tier. Previously only displayed your season 2 rank for the specific game type you're loading. And pretty much people have spoken and Riot's going to reverse this in patch 3.12 so get used to it for a little bit. Not a huge deal on this one. It's that's nice. General. Fixed the minimap bug showing champions at incorrect locations when emerging from the fog of war. Had that happened to me several times where it's like Zach's up top, then all of a sudden he's mid, and you're like, how the hell did that happen? That's how. Because it was a you know UI bug that had to be fixed. They fixed it, so Yay! Canceling auto attacks will no longer fire a damageless missile at the target. Your damageless missile will no longer uh yeah, your damageless missile will no longer consume buffs or passives. Meaning say you had the red buff and you auto attack canceled on your enemy support, you know, it no longer you know, if you do get that auto attack cancel off and the damageless missile does go off, then you you know, no, no longer do damage with that red buff that you otherwise would have done. So, yeah. You may still hear the sound effect, but they're working on fixing it. So, it's not a big deal, just a minor bug with that. But glad they changed that. That was a huge, huge issue. I can't tell you how many times I never got hit, but still have, like, somebody's red buff or, you know, Elder Lizard going on me for whatever reason. Minions will now disappear from the map sooner after their death. I guess people were lagging because of that? I don't know. I, like, I honestly don't know on that one. Cr 
cursors will now be set to the center of the map or center of their window by default, preventing the camera from panning too far to the left or right corners of the map at the game start. Have that happen to me a lot when you know I have an alt tab during streaming, so I'm glad they changed that. Also, speaking of streaming, cursors will be set to the center of their window for a short period of time after the player switches full screen focus, aka you alt tab. I alt tab a lot, I know a lot of other players alt tab a lot when you're streaming or playing, you're changing a song, whatever. Glad they changed that so that way you no longer accidentally click the wrong side of the map. You can only click like three feet in front of you. That's a nice, you know, fix that will prevent unneeded deaths, realistically speaking. Removed the default key binding for show slash hide summoner names, which was previously shift K. However, the function can still be bound in the key bindings menu if you still wish to use it. I, for one, am going to use that. I'm going to go ahead and change that whenever I get into the league. And reduce the amount of time you can spend AFK before being kicked from the game. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was like 20 minutes one time and somebody finally got kicked from being, you know, for being AFK. So I can't wait to see how long it is now. If it's like 10 minutes, great. Phenomenal. At least your opponents can finally see that. I hope at least. Tower health now is now updated even if you've never had the tower out of the fog of war. So you can click on enemy towers and see what their health is at. Okay, not a huge deal. The summer tab in the summer's profile has been updated with a new layout. The uh, champion grid has been winded as yeah, has been winded, allowing more champions to be set up or seen at once. The primary role selector has been changed from a button group to a drop down in the upper right. Okay, not a huge deal. I don't know how that's going to affect anything, but we'll have to see. Friends list. Part of the friends list view has been rewin uh, rewritten in order to increase stability and performance. Fixed bug that caused, or fixed bug causing the friends list to be corrupt in, with duplicate and missing entries when scrolling, and friends notes are now visible in friend tooltips without needing to hover over the note icon. And then custom games, nobody really cares about that. But yeah guys, that's it, sorry for the long video. Under this is just the discussion, and uh, yeah, hope you all enjoyed it. Again, sorry for the quite long video, but I thought I would just give you guys my thoughts as well. Other than that, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see the changes to Draven come into play. The same thing with Udir and Zach. Those are very, very vital changes. Other than that, my name has been Shadowswell. I will talk to you all next time.